Alright, what is going on, Pulian, and welcome back to another episode of Arc Survival Evolved Max Speed. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Shinehorn, one of the shoulder pets from the Arc Aberration DLC, along with the three others being the Glowtail, Featherlight, and the Bulb Dog. Now, the Shinehorn are my personal favorite ones. They're basically just adorable, tiny little goats, and we're going to spawn in two here so we can compare the before adding the Max Speed and after. We got two. We got two different colored ones. There are kind of a beige orange with white stripes, which are pretty standard. And then we get a slightly gray with the blue one that I think looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to look up at the stats a little bit here. If you want a little bit of information on the Shinehorn, on average, they're going to have about the second best capacity. The best belongs to the Bulb Dog. They're going to have the third best regen just behind the Featherlight. Barely, barely behind the Featherlight. And they're going to have the third best range. All in all, these ones are my favorite because they don't have that pitiful regen and range that the Bulb Dog has. But they also have a pretty decent capacity, and if I had to pick one out of the four shoulder mounts to just, like, grab a wild one and go and just hope to God that you don't get nameless spawning on you, I'd pick the Shinehorn, because I like them the most. I think they're the coolest looking, I think they're adorable, they just follow you around little goats, and, uh, I don't know, I like them. I like them a lot. So, you can see here, these are the stats of our first guy right here, level 225, and here are the stats of the female. They're relatively similar, I think that the, the male has quite a bit more charge capacity and the female does. I think the female got more range than the male did. But as you can see that uh, a pretty much a standard movement speed player here running around, they're not going to be keeping up very good pace with you. Now, we're in the blue area which is where the Shinehorns spawn the most on Aberration. In fact, it's the only area of the map they do spawn and it's pretty dangerous. Featherlights still hold the king cr or the crown of just it's a nightmare to go and get them. Glowtail spawn in a cave that's on the surface area which is pretty easy to get them in and out of. Uh, bulb dogs spawn all over the fertile biome. Shinehorn spawn in the blue, and then the feather lights spawn all the way down in the black purple area. And ugh, just I think shinehorns are honestly worse to go and get because of the fact that you're gonna have nameless spawning on you. You're gonna have countless amounts of ravagers attacking you, and there's water everywhere, and there's freezing spores that will just annihilate you if you don't have a hazmat suit on. And I would rather be in the black biome getting feather lights than in the blue biome getting shine horns. So you can see here, every time we level up the shine horn in movement speed, it gets 2.3% added, coming out at a very impressive 393.3% .3 movement speed once all the levels are added to it. Kind of a common theme with shoulder pets is that, you know, we're always seeing that they have incredibly high numbers because of the fact that their base movement speed is not very good because they're not very big. But the shine horn kind of bucks that trend just a little bit there, and you can see just how fast it is. It's pretty much keeping up with myself as a player. The Shinehorn does have good enough stats that you could probably get away with making a maximum movement speed Shinehorn. Not sure why you'd want to. Um, I think that uh, the Nameless really only spawn on players, but I could be wrong. So if you're leading a big convoy, having a max speed Shinehorn to keep up with the slower members of that pack would be somewhat beneficial, but the following system in Arc is just so horrible that I wouldn't recommend trying it anyway. If you saw earlier, they're really fast in the water and it won't affect it very much, our movement speed that we're adding here. I, I did see ratios all over the internet of saying that you get about a two, 2 to 1 ratio of how much oxygen influences your movement speed in the water to how much your movement speed influences your movement speed in the water. So, I mean, if you wanted to get an aquatic shine horn, oxygen would clearly be the way to go. But uh, that is, that's a pretty big difference between the default movement speed one and our max speed one right here. You can clearly see that the max speed one is almost easily capable of keeping up with the player whereas the default movement speed one is lagging significantly further behind. The wingsuit did get nerfed a little while ago, but it's still, in my opinion, the best way of testing uh, movement speed on creatures that are otherwise faster than you because of the fact that you can still go quite quickly. But this is where you really start to notice how much faster the Shinehorn is. Look how fast it jumps and it bounces and it's so cute. It looks so joyful. And then this one back here, it's still cute, but it's so much slower than the first one. And that's really kind of all I have to say about these two. They're adorable, they're my favorite, and then I wish you could probably get them a little bit more readily than just having to go into the blue biome and get your s face torn off by some ravagers and... Oh god, don't even get me started on the megalosaurus that don't go to sleep. Anyway, um... If you have any comments, suggestions for the next episode of Max Speed, please leave them in the comments. The comment with the most upvotes by the time that I'm ready to make that video will win. And so you can recommend anything. Of course, the TLC patches will be coming out with all the new creatures soon, which is going to be the Parasaur, but I don't think they're changing too much on that other than the little roar function. And they're going to be changing up the Raptor's model slightly. 
it might affect the movement speed, so that is something to take into consideration. Of course, because the Arc Devs changed the movement speed of all the other dinosaurs a while ago, we're going to have to go and back and look over all of those ones too, so leave anything in the comments, and the, mo the most upvotes will become the next max speed video when it I do inevitably make it. So, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode of Whatever We Make. Thanks for watching. Peace. <laughs> Took a while to pull the trigger on that one.